And the threat from geoengineering is far greater than just those fires, not to downplay those. But, we're, for example, one example, ozone destruction. The ozone layer is being completely torn apart. The largest, greatest, or the, the, the single most significant causal factor is climate engineering. And, and not that CFCs aren't a problem, not that other forms of pollution aren't a problem. They are a problem. They're all a problem. Any form of human activity that alters the energy balance of the planet or the atmosphere is a problem. Climate engineering is mathematically the biggest problem of all. So what I'm saying from countless directions, but climate engineering is literally tearing the Earth's life support systems apart. The elements they use are toxic. We're all breathing those elements. They're being absorbed by every living thing in the web of life. Again, so many roads lead back to climate engineering. Yeah, so uh, in the last uh, three years, I have developed COPD, right? And a lot of my friends have died from respiratory illness. And uh, last time I checked, the Center for Disease Control listed respiratory disease as the third highest cause of death in the United States. Last if, time I checked. If they list respiratory disease at that point, then, then the um, Alzheimer's and dementia issue may have moved up further forward as well because we have... Actually, in regard to seniors right it's now, in statistically speaking, one out of three seniors dies with Alzheimer's and or dementia. It's the number one cause of death in the UK. We think it's uh, at that point here now as well, but CDC is not admitting to it. And for those that doubt the relation to climate engineering or think we're just blaming everything on climate engineering, that's because there's so many things that can be blamed on climate engineering. When you saturate the atmosphere with highly toxic metal and chemical elements that rain down to the air column and... and and absolutely contaminate the entire web of life. Again, uh, there's a lot you can justifiably blame on that. And in regard to how we know this is happening, we've done about 70 lab tests in Northern California alone, and the amount of highly toxic metals, aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, lead, copper, and polymers coming down in that air column is staggering, absolutely staggering. Our precipitation is literally highly toxic at times. It depends on what part of the storm you catch, how much spraying went on over that storm. But we're not speculating. So much metal, bud, that it has changed forest floor pH values in the Redding Siskiyou County areas, or south of Siskiyou County, 10 to 12 times toward alkaline. Did anybody stop to think how much metal it takes to do that? And we have the baseline. So we're not speculating, bud. We're asking people to look, examine this, and understand that as we see all the political theater we do every day, and it's, it's, it's so absurd now that we're, we're literally living in an asylum, the kind of yeah. distractions we see, that's to hide biosphere collapse and to hide the fact that our power structure, the Western power structure, is pushing toward global conflict, World War III. Why? Because the, the biggest cache of remaining resources on the planet is Russia. And that's the prize right now. So that's where they're pushing. And we need to see through the smoke and mirrors and understand what's going on. But all of it leads back to biosphere collapse. Now, here's something that I've been wondering about. I don't know if I saw you uh, hear you say it or what, but... Aluminum is one of the materials, one of the heavy metals that they're spraying in nanoparticulate size, and that size is very, very small, very, very small. That's in the billionth of an inch, you know, billionths of an inch. And so aluminum, as I understand it, it aluminum powder, you can make a bomb out of it, right? So I'm wondering... Is this causing our forest fires to be more intense than normal? Okay, let me, let me outline that in more detail then. To start with, for those who, who would like to claim that because aluminum is a, a substantial percentage of the Earth's strata, that we should expect to see it in the precipitation in the air, that's an absolute lie. Aluminum does not exist in the environment in free form, period. It cannot be there in free form unless it's been mined and refined and distributed. For those that think these trails are, quote, condensation, I urge you to go to geoengineeringwatch.org and search the high-bypass turbofan jet engine tutorial link. This type of jet engine, all military tankers, all commercial aircraft, jet-powered fan, by design, nearly incapable of creating any condensation trail except under the most extreme circumstances. But have you ever seen anybody in the Arctic walking along with condensation exhaling up from their breath that has a cloud behind them if they walked a mile? Never. Right. Condensation doesn't do that. So back to the fires. This is not condensation we're seeing over our head. Aluminum, yes, it's an incendiary dust. Yes, it's used for demolitions. The forest fires, how are they affected by climate engineering? First, the hydrological cycle, the rain cycle, completely disrupted, as I alluded to earlier in this 
broadcast. They can shut the rain off for as long as they wish. We can speculate on the agendas, but the fact they're doing it, we can prove from satellite imagery, too. It's destroying the ozone layer, as I stated. That fries the tree's foliage from the top down, kills the trees. They shut their stomata, their respiratory ports. They're not res respirating. They're not inhaling carbon. They're not exhaling oxygen. Free the bioavailable toxic metals. In the case of aluminum, we know from peer-reviewed study, when the root systems are exposed to those that metal in particular, they shut down nutrient uptake. They stop absorbing nutrients, they begin to die. It makes them susceptible to beetles, which the quote, official sources blame everything on the beetles. Beetles are only a symptom, only a symptom. And I, I know the state's CAL FIRE, I know their top entomologist, I know he knows climate engineering is going on. He will not admit to it, it's a bad career decision. Uh, we have a federal gag order on all National Weather Service and all NOAA employees, why would you gag the weathermen? Let me finish on the fires though. Yeah. So all the elements I just named, and now, these metals are obviously electrically conductive, so when you saturate the atmosphere with them, you have more dry lightning with less rain, as I expressed. So now we have more dry lightning strikes. When those strikes occur, now you have what you described, bud, the foliage, and incendiary dust covering everything. All these conditions are fueling epic forest fires around the globe. All these roads lead back to climate engineering. Yeah, yeah that's... Uh yeah, that, that's what I understand is going on with the aluminum, but it's not just aluminum, it's barium, it's tronium. Correct. You said there's a whole list of other things. Correct. And um, who is it that, that's interviewed on um, that comedy show years ago? Already? Well, Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert. He's yes. interviewing David Key. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, Stephen's like, so you mean... Because there's pollution in the atmosphere, it's causing global warming, and we're going to put more pollution in the air to solve the problem. <laughs> I would encourage your listeners to search David Keith, Stephen Colbert. Yeah. That's a, that's a six-minute exchange. It's online. Uh, they would be quite shocked at that exchange. Then, when they're done, I would encourage your listeners to search David Keith, Dane Wigington. And they'll find about a five-minute clip of me confronting Dr. Keith at an international geoengineering conference where Dr. Keith was uh, pushing for the uh, objective of putting 20, 10 to 20 million tons of aluminum nanoparticulates in the atmosphere. And in that exchange, your listeners can see him state that they've done no study as to human toxicological effects, environmental toxicity. He said, and I'm quoting, could terrible things happen tomorrow? We don't know. What kind of a cavalier attitude is that for oh, entering us all into an experiment without our knowledge or consent from which there is no return? There's no return. The damage is irreparable in any time frame that matters on many fronts. So um, we are all a part of that experiment, and that's that's uh, not disputable if one examines the data. One thinks of the arrogance of mankind, and David Keith is kind of like a perfect example of that. Um, he, he is. Now, I would encourage listeners also, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, um, hopefully in the morning, if not by the afternoon, we will post a debate, a YouTube debate, that I just did a week ago with an associate of Dr. Keith, Dr. Douglas McMartin. He he's, works for uh, Caltech and Cornell. The debate was on the geoengineering reality. It's a very revealing and damning debate. I, uh, WBAI in New York did host the debate uh, with myself and Dr. Martin. I would encourage your listeners to look for that YouTube, examine all the data presented there while the, the debate audio is going, and it's, they can decide for themselves who is lying? Only two possibilities with people like Dr. Martin or Dr. David Keith. They are either unimaginably ignorant of the science in which they claim to be an expert, or they are lying. And I would encourage your listeners to look at geoengineeringwatch.org. Uh, sometime tomorrow we'll have this debate up under recent top stories uh, sections, and uh, I think they'll find it uh, very informative and alarming. Yeah, and I want to tell everybody that Dane, who we have on the phone, Dane Wigington, he, every week he produces a radio broadcast, which I guess you call our podcast. He sends it to me, and I I don't always have time, but I, when you listen to his hour show, it, he just kills it with information, and he ties everything that's going on together, like you're doing right now, Dane. Well, I, I appreciate the support, bud, and that, that show is called Global Alert News. It's, pub, it's broadcast live on the West Coast from 
several AM FM stations. It's broadcast on the East Coast, but it's also for free download, or, or for free, uh, you know, the YouTube, rather. We posted that at geoengineeringwatch.org as well. And, and what we're trying to do, the goal of our site, again, we face countless challenges, and we have people on all sides of political fences and, and different public viewpoints and so forth. But I think everyone would agree that if we don't make sure the planet can continue to support life, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And we, right. are, we are on the fast track right now to a planet that won't support life. And I'm not talking about centuries away. I'm not talking about decades away. Mathematically speaking, at the current rate of die-off, this is not, so we're not speculating or hypothesizing, at the current rate of die-off, we have precious little time. And what makes it so critical, bud, is as we see the power structure maneuvering right now, you see them pushing toward World War III right now. That's what they're doing. Yep. That's directly related to biosphere collapse and the quest for resources to keep the military-industrial complex machine of total insanity moving forward. So the power structure, at any point in time, when they think the population is going to wake up to how severe our situation is, who knows what they may do. Perhaps they'll change the already highly toxic climate engineering mix that is raining down on all of us and put something really lethal in that, in that mix, and we're done at that point. And if people doubt they would do this, I challenge them. Go to geoengineeringwatch.org. Search for the name Ken Caldera. Caldera. Ken Caldera, he's a, he's a former Lawrence Livermore government scientist, now at Stanford, and they can hear him say in his own words what he did for the government was to design pathogens to seed in the clouds to infect the populations below. Wow. It, it, his name is a pun. It cracks me up because he, they talk about him and David Keith talk about the Pinatubo effect, which was a volcano that spewed so much uh, sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere that it lower, lowered the temperature in uh, places like Africa or some places in some places, some other places, the uh, temperature got higher. But, um, you know, it's called the Pinatubo effect. That's a volcano and a caldera is... <laughs> no. Yeah, that's interesting. That is, that is interesting <laughs> in relation to volcanism. Let's look at what they say about that, though. Although Pinatubo did it, it what they don't say is in addition to cooling effect over overall on the planet, it totally disrupted hydrological cycles. It, that was by 50% till that point in record keeping, the lowest rainfall year ever recorded by 50%. And those particulates in the atmosphere, like geoengineering particulates, destroy the ozone layer. Yeah. And, and of course, the fact that climate engineering has been going on fully deployed since 1945. We have the documents to prove that. So. Um, there's nothing but deception coming from academia, especially in regard to the climate engineering issue. And But I'm, I'm sorry to say that the quote-unquote environmental groups are turning two blind eyes to the most dire environmental threat of all. And we know this. Our, our attorneys, we have attorneys at geoengineeringwatch.org. We have a legal alliance to stop geoengineering. We've already filed a lawsuit in Canada. We filed against the Department of Commerce to get records from NOAA. That's ongoing, but our attorneys have communicated with the attorneys from WWF, Sierra Club, Greenpeace, Earth Justice. None of them are willing to address this issue because they feel it would risk their 501c3 nonprofit. I, had, I, I have been experiencing that, and to say I'm frustrated would be understating it. And I want everybody to have noted our sky today. We've been having rain and snow and sleet and hail. And today we finally had a blue sky, and they credited it up with uh, fake clouds, you know, those fake cirrus clouds. If I and can make mention of that snow, this is a major aspect of climate engineering. Patented processes of chemical ice nucleation for weather modification. These processes can and are creating what should be a precipitation event, a rain event, into a frozen precipitation event, and that can be in many different forms from ice pellets to three-inch white snowflakes, and this is not a natural event. We, we've, we just recorded and posted a video of about three to four-inch snowflakes in parts of Colorado that were coming down at 50 degrees, bud, 50 degrees. And again, we have the patents for these processes. The Chinese government openly announced they were converting what should have been rain into snow. To It, it creates the illusion of winter for the population. It creates division and confusion in the population as to the true state of the climate. Division and confusion is beneficial to the power structure. It masks the severity of climate implosion. So what your listeners should understand is when you have these weather whiplash scenarios that literally, literally have gone from 100 degrees one day, in the case of Amarillo, Texas, May 1st, 2013, 100 degrees, all-time record high, snowed the next day. We have unimaginable conditions that are, that are so incredibly out of balance 
It's a result of literally engineered winter snowstorms with chemical ice nucleation processes sprayed into cloud moisture from jet aircraft. Yeah, many people have not even heard of this. Now, it, it, it's, a, it's a, just a...